you have to be the guy. Oh, man. It's like every single loud ass diesel truck that could possibly go by, and now somebody's hobby plane. I live out in the freaking country, 65 miles away from a major city, and I can't get away from road noise. Well, guys, from time to time, I get people asking me on the uh, in the comments to go, hey, how do I get a start in this business? Uh, what school do I need to go to? Where do I need to sign up? What college do I need to go to? What degrees? What certifications? And all that. And this is the video for you. So just first and foremost, you don't have to go to a technical college. Or you don't have to go to a trade school or anything like that. You don't have to do all that to get in this industry. One major thing about this industry is that it is a, it's really easy to get into because there's so much shortage for technicians. There's a lot of schools to go to. There's a big train of thought about going and getting a, uh, the, you know, a, certification going to one of these big name schools and everything but i have a huge problem with that because these big name schools are starting to get into the point of actually charging the same amount that a freaking college is charging and you're talking about maybe not ivy league schools but pretty far up there i mean i'm not gonna name any names because i don't want to get lawsuits or anything or any hate mail but a lot of these big companies you know they, they charge 30 you know up to thirty five thousand forty thousand dollars a year for their degree program the problem i have with that is when you get out of school you're in debt only go if you can afford it, if you can afford it. I highly suggest you guys try to find a, a community college, a tech school that's close, that's relatively cheap compared to the big name schools. The big name schools are getting to the point. It's all about the money. It's all about the Benjamins kind of deal. They just want the cash for it. I don't know if they're necessarily providing that great of an uh, education or that, that much better of an education compared to what you can get as a, a community college can. So the price is just, it's astronomical compared to what you get out of it. Now, I'm not saying you can't make a lot of money in this industry, because you can. I have personally made a ton of cash, a lot more money than you would believe that I could make, you know, in doing my own thing and uh, working for it. I mean, the last company I worked for, I made $35 an hour, you know, um, which in Texas is a lot of money. I know, and get guys in the, in the comments, you know, the, the California, blah, 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 this. No, this is, this is, Texas, you're talking about $35 an hour, averaging 10, 15 hours of overtime a week. So you're talking about a lot of money. Anyway, um, and the sky's the limit on top of that. There's other places you can go for $40, $50 an hour that I've been told or heard, you know, the uh, the old unicorn tale. But you don't have to go and do all that. But you can make a really good living in this industry. It's a great industry to be in. You can start at the very, very bottom of the rung. You can start, this is my suggestion, if you guys don't have the cash, you don't want to go into debt, you don't need your tools. You don't have to start off. With, you don't have to start off with certifications or anything. You just go to your enter shop here, whatever automotive, diesel, industrial, heavy equipment, whatever. Go to some shops and go talk to the service managers. You go tell him. He's like, "Hey, man, my name is so and so. Um, I really want to get into this industry. I don't have any uh, experience. I don't have the money to go to school, but I'm willing to do anything to get in the door. You know, do you have any entry level jobs that I can get in?" Uh, as a porter uh, doing oil changes, just something to get my foot in the door. And you'll find a shop that will need somebody. They'll need a porter, they need a mop. I started pushing the mop, you know, and, and pressure washing stuff and pulling trucks in and out of bays. Uh, and then I went to oil changes and I went up from there. Then I went, I progressed and progressed and progressed. Um, I did also go to UTI, but uh, I do not feel like my education at UTI helped me get a job in any way. And for the naysayers out there, like, I went to UTI and spent $76,000 or whatever it cost them to go. And they say that, and they say stuff like, well, UTI didn't get me a job. Bull crap. It is nobody's responsibility to get you a job other than you. I don't care what school you go to. I don't care what they promise you. No one on this planet has to give you a job. Whether you spend $100,000 on a school, whether you spend $100 on a school, it does not matter. You are responsible for getting your job. It's not the government, it's not your mom, it's not your dad, it's not your brother, it's not your high school teacher. All these people can help, but it's your responsibility to get that job. You have to go in, you have to talk to the guy. If for some reason you go to one shop and let's say you got your heart set on being a Dodge mechanic, you just always wanted to be a Dodge mechanic. Well, there's other places to go to Dodge dealer. This might require you moving out of your area. If you really wanna do what you want to do, then you can move out of your area and go find somewhere and find work. It's not that, you know, foreign of a concept. You can do it. It's not that foreign of a concept. You can do that. You can move. My suggestion, don't have your heart set on one particular place. If you really want to go work at that Dodge dealer or that cat dealer or something, you can't get a job now, 
Go find a job somewhere else at a mom and pop. Go find a job at a different dealer, a competing dealer. Go get your foot in the door somewhere. Get your experience in a year. Go back to the other shop and say, hey, I've worked at XYZ Auto Diesel Heavy Equipment Repair for the last year. I've got experience. I've got some tools. I want a job here. Talk to the supervisor again. Maybe he's got a job now that you got experience. You never know. Second case in point, if you go to a shop and you walk in, do not walk in with a suit and tie on, okay? Contrary to your high school counselor's belief that you need to wear a two-piece suit to go to an automotive diesel shop, you're probably not going to get that job dressed like that. Wear a nice clean pair of jeans, nice shoes, and a button-up shirt. Do not run in with your, your whatever have you hug somebody t-shirt that you bought off my Amazon link in another video. That's not going to work. Don't come in dirty. Just come in with something clean, okay? Go in and talk to the supervisor. Don't take up all of his, you know, all his time. Don't take up his whole day. What you need to do, you need to walk into the shop on a mission. Walk into the service department and you say, hi, my name is John, or whatever. It's like, hi, my name is Steven. Uh, can I talk, you know, can I talk to the service manager? And they'll say, sure, what's it about? And tell them, I'm inquiring about a job. And they'll say, okay, let me go see if Joe Bob over here is at his desk if he's not looking up porn or something and uh, he's got some time for you. You go, you'll talk to Joe Bob. You sit down, you make it real short and concise. I'm like, uh, you find out his name. I'll always start off with Mr. or Mrs. or whatever. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. And he'll say, you know, my name is Bob Jones. Hello, Mr. Jones. My name is Stephen. Whatever your answer last name. My name is Stephen Cox. I'm here because I'd really like to get a job at this dealer or this shop. I don't have any experience. I don't have the money to go to school, but I'm very determined to get a job here. Do you think, do you happen to have any openings for entry level where I could have the chance to move up in the position? He'll look at you and you can pretty much get right then if he's actually needing help or not. Sometimes they go, you know what, today is your lucky day. I need somebody to go out there and sweep and mop, you know, the entire parking lot. Take that job, okay? You can take that job. It's going to be low pay, but when you're there, go to these other technicians that are there and pick their brains about everything that you can possibly pick their brains about. Don't get annoying where it's 100% of the time because you do have to work. You're there to work to make money for the company or help the company. But go and ask, you know, a couple occasional questions every day. It's like, hey, guys, I was looking up an uh, injector pump last night. I don't really understand the concept. Uh, go up to, you know, uh, the, one of the friendly techs. I'm like, can you show me what an injection pump is, what it does, how it operates, and what's your advice on changing them out? Listen to him. Take that. Seal it away. Go to another tech. Ask him the same thing. Do some research on YouTube. Get all the information you can. Once you've been there for a little while, go to your boss and say, hey, you know, it's been uh, four months, five months. I really want to get in the oil changes. And then ask him, you know, it's like, I want to go to the oil change. I want to do PMs. Okay, you have to be the judge of what's going on here. Some shop supervisors will keep you in that same position for a long time. Some shop supervisors will try to keep you in the same position a long time, okay? After about four months, five months, if you haven't changed any oil, you haven't helped any of the other mechanics do any jobs that keep you on the same thing, it's probably a good indicator that they're not going to let you do anything, okay? You need to find another source somewhere else and be applying at other places. Find other avenues. Talk to the other techs. You know, any other shops uh, uh, shops that are hiring, okay? that in, Your career can transgress from there. When you're working at the shop, you need to stay current with what your average industry pay is. If you're at a shop for one year and you've actually been doing mechanic work for one year, you need to go to your boss and you say, okay, I started at 10 bucks. I started at $10 an hour. Uh, I need a raise. If he wants to give you $10.25 an hour and one year experience, a heavy equipment mechanic, you're probably going to start off around $15 an hour. Within a year, you can average about $18 to $20 an hour. Two years experience, you should be between $2 and $20 and $24 an hour. Three years, three to five, you can get about $25 to $30. And over five years experience, you should be making over $30 an hour. If you're at a shop, you're not making that. It's up to you if you want to quit and go somewhere else. I guarantee there's other shops out there that would be glad to have your five years experience in tools for over $30 an hour. If you go to a shop and you shake the supervisor hand, Mr. Bob or whatever his name is, uh, Mr. Bob Jones, you come shake his hand, you don't hear something from him in two weeks. Go get your butt back to the shop, wear your clean clothes again, walk in. I try to walk in on like Mondays or Tuesdays. Walk in on Monday or Tuesday, come up, find him, shake his hand, and go, hello, Mr. Jones, how are you doing today? Just want to let you know that I'm still available as soon as you have a spot open. He'll say, okay, thanks, let you know. Leave. Just get out of there at that point. If he wants to talk, he brings something else up, like how was your week or something like that. Be short, concise, but kind of make it seem like you've got somewhere to be, okay? 
You don't want to be lollygagging at the place all day because the guy's going to think you had nothing better to do. You do have something better to do. You got to go find a job. Be short, concise with the guy. Shake his hand. Look him straight in the eye when you're talking to him. Tell him your name. Say, hey, I'm still available for when you need me. Let me know. He'll tell you, okay, I'll keep you in mind. Leave. Come back in another two weeks. You keep doing this. Every two weeks, eventually he's going to have a spot for you. Eventually he's going to say, look, man, stop coming in. I'm not going to hire you. And then you've got, you know, a lot of people are fear of rejection, but don't fear it, man. If he says something, you got two options. If it was me, I'd go, okay, can just for future reference, can you tell me what went wrong? Why not, not getting a job here? You know, this is after, you know, you've been doing it for a month, two months. Sometimes they go, I just don't have a spot for you, man. I love the fact that you're dedicated, you're coming up here. Uh, or he'll tell you, you're annoying as hell. Get the hell away. That's what's wrong with you. And you just kind of judge it. You got to change your game plan at that point. My personal opinion, you do not have to have a degree. You don't have to go to these schools. You don't have to go to the UTIs, the Lincoln Techs, the whatever, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year schools. You don't have to. If you have the money for it and you can afford it, or you've got some fortunate parents that have saved or they're paying for it, they're gonna help you out. Great. I didn't have any of that stuff. I went into debt, got out of school with twenty one thousand dollars owed, even though I didn't even finish the school, which is another deal. If you go to these schools and you don't finish, they're still gonna charge you the full amount. And me and my wife had to pay it off. So you don't have to do that, okay? You don't have to go into debt for it. You can get in this industry. It's not a fabled industry where there's no entry. The only kind of time that you cannot get entry into this position, this building, this career path or the automotive, the diesel, the heavy equipment is if you don't try. You have to be persistent. You have to go to these shops. You have to talk to these guys. You have to shake their hands. They're not going to call you if you send them your email resume with nothing on there. I've had no job my entire life, but I want to work at your dealer, you know, an email. That's not going to happen. Leaving a voicemail, it's not going to happen. They're not going to call you. Walk into the shop, shake some hands, get to know everybody. Remember everybody's first name, okay? I know that's hard too. You know, people are like, I got a horrible memory, can't remember anything. When you go in someplace, you take your phone out, you take a pad, you meet the service advisor, you write the service advisor's name down, okay? John, you know, Wilkes Booth or whatever was the service advisor, um, had in, in a little description, wore glasses, white hair, um, white dude, you know, medium height, uh, medium build, or, you know, a, a bigger guy or a skinnier guy, whatever. Especially want to remember that service advisor's name. You don't want to walk in there and be like, what's the service advisor's name again? Okay. Remember the guy's name. You walk in, he's not going to remember your name, but you remembered his. That, that, the sales technique. Go in, remember the guy's name, talk to him. I guarantee you guys do this, you will get a job in this industry. And then when you're in there, any dealer that you go to, try to target the ones that have training programs like Caterpillar, Cummins, uh, Freight Shaker, something like that, Peterbilt, Kenworth. Go in and absorb all the information you can. Get all the digital manuals you can. Find out if they have any paper manuals you, you know, they're willing to get rid of. Get all the information you can and study it. Take, you know, two, you know, two, three nights a week and just study for an hour or two. You'll make yourself better than any tech out there. I can guarantee it. Because most of the techs I've ever gone to, you know, worked with, 90% of the techs weren't that great. 10% of the techs were A-sharp guys because they, they invested the time and they were curious about it. But my rant's over. I know it's gone for a little while. Hope that helps you guys. Um, I am hoping to eventually partner you like my my goal for this channel is i want to partner with caterpillar directly or micro works i want to partner with them to do a, a, a video series about how to get into this program how to get into the micro works program how to get into the cat think big or think bigger program how to get a job with them you know what they're looking for what kind of training i've sent some emails off i really really hope i get some traction on it um if any of you guys feel, you know, have any contacts out there like that, know somebody that I can get in contact with at Caterpillar or Holt Cat or Microworks, something like that, let me know. Send them an email on my behalf. I don't care. Send them a link to my channel. Send them a link to this video. But thank you for your time. I hope to have some more updates and get out and fix them.